guys, so it's back here with the rain channel. Today, back with Friendship According to Hungry. Now, we're going to be reading today, chapter 3. Sad, bad, mad, bad. Let's get started. I'll tell you how the world... <clears throat> I'll tell you how the whole week went. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It must have been National Frog Exception Week because frogs were all we talked about in 26. First, Mrs. Brisbane taught everybody how to take care of us. Since gathered around and she put on rubber gloves, picked up the insect container and sprinkled the feet into Aunt's tank. She, she didn't seem too happy about the crickets, which turned out to be quite large and ugly. The way they leap around the tank, no wonder all the boing. Did you see his tongue as he bellowed? It must be a foot long. Ooh, he would eat one. Had he squealed. Gross, it says, as Aunt's tongue grabbed the rest of the crickets. I want to pet him, said Mandy. Before anyone could stop her, she slid the top of the tank, reached down and picked up the big lump of frog. No, Mandy, said Mrs. Christman, but it was too late. He peed on me, Mandy shrieked, dropping Aunt back into his tank. Not that I blame her. What unsqueakably bad manners. Is that any way for a classroom pet to act? Such a bad chicken says, Ooh, Gil giggled, of course, and asked, Did everyone else wash your hands with plenty of soap and hot water, Mrs. Swing told Mandy to the rest of the class, she said. That's what frogs do when they're frightened. You must be all gentle. Poor Og, if you have to touch him, you must wear gloves. Pick him up by the shoulder blades and never squeeze his stomach or you'll hurt him. She ordered my classmates back to their seats, not including Mandy who was washing her hands. Then we had to clean, learn, then we had to learn more frog facts. They don't start out as cute, furry little babies like camps. No, no, no. They start out as funny little tadpoles, then grow up into into ugly looking poly walks and in the best big lumpy frogs with ugly eyes. For example, strange for some strange reason everyone was fans was fascinated from except Tabda and me. She paid more attention to stuff fair than anything to else in class. Class. I overheard Mandy complain. I tried to get her to play at recess, but she wasn't interested in anything besides that old bear. She's a big baby, same mother. Maybe she sighed. I was pleased not to say how large to speak up, but the other girls decided to have that was just unfriendly, like some someone else who was new to room 26. After so much talk, Mrs. Brisbane moved on to the subject of poetry. First, we read a scary poem about a tiger. We also read a poem about a bee, followed by a silly poem about a purple cow. Some poems rhyme and some didn't, but there were, there are a lot of rhyme words like moon and june and cat and rat. Funny that those last two words rhyme, isn't it? All night, while well, we all stared into space, I made lists of rhyme words in my notebook. Better than trying to talk to him. As he continued to give me the silent treatment, jumpy, jumpy, bumpy, grumpy, lumpy. Funny that those words rhyme too. After a few days spent reading poems, Mrs. Frisman said it was time for us to write our own poems. There were louder groans than the first time she mentioned poetry. Mrs. Frisman held up her hand. She meant everybody had to be quiet. Only this participation for a round time day. And our class present a poetry festival for all of the parents. Each of you will receive a poem you wrote or when you like. There were no groans now. In fact, some was just excited. Even pay attention to Aunt Pedro was paying attention. Mrs. Rismet explained that our assignment was to write a poem about an animal, be six lines long, with 
What's that rhyme? May you raise your hand and teacher called on her. My name rhymes with candy cane. Spelling as announced. Announced. Wow, that's right, Mandy Payne and Candy Cane. Does anyone else have a rhyme in me? Richie rhymes with itchy. AJ blurred it out. What? Asked. What? Asked. Repeat it, please, Richie. Words are flying through my brain. Humphrey, Humphrey, don't free, lump free. Gil rhymes with the hail. Hetty forgot to raise her hand again and fail. Kirk muttered. I heard that Kirk Chen says, Oh, Kirk rhymes with dark. Bruh. 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 Well, Kirk rhymes with jerk, said Hetty. Who was always ready to defend her best friend, Gail? Please, no more, Miss Brisbane said firmly. Kirk also rhymes with work, so let's get back to work. Bro, that was good. Yeah. Pretty good. Not too bad at all. Okay. So let's get back to work. Learn some of my classmates were so hard before. Richie chewed on his pencil, said to go to the sleigh. Hetty erased more than she wrote. Curtis scratched his head and Miranda wrote and wrote and wrote. Then she stopped writing and raised her hand. This is Brisbane. Can you think of anything that rhymes with hamster? Yes, let's throw that out to the class, said the teacher. Anyone? Leave it to Gordon. Miranda, to ask such a good question. True. But got everybody thinking because it was so quiet. Could have heard a pencil drop. Two pencils did drop in the back. How about gangster? A voice called out, raise your hand, Hetty. Mrs. Brisbane walked to the board. How about that class? Does hamster run gangster? He wrote the words on the board and repeated them. For that, they don't have quite the same sound, do they? Well, I would hope not. Gangsters are bad guys, and I am definitely a good guy. Gangsters. Maybe you'd, you'd better find another word to rhyme, the teacher instructed. Try Humphrey, speak in encouragement. There had to be something that rhymed. Try frog, shouted to AJ. Lower your voice, AJ, Mrs. Brisbane reminded him. Raise your hands, and it handy. The sister could shook her hand and began to ring words on the board so my classmates shot them out. Dog, fog, log, slot, clog, and more. Nothing rhymed with hamster, but everything rhymed with frog. How depressing. I wondered how many words rhymed with sad, like mad and bad. I know he says it was Miranda's turn to clean my cake. She always does an extra good job to clean my potty corner, clean my water and bedding, and she always has a special treat for me, like a piece of cauliflower. Yum. Sorry, Humphrey. I tried to write a poem about you, she told me. I think I'm going to have to write about Clem instead. Clem was Miranda's dog, the one who tried to eat me when I stay at her house. How cool that Miranda could put up with Clem. Clem was beyond me. That night, I wrote my very first poem ever. I asked Odd if I wanted to hear it. His silence wasn't too encouraging because, but I decided to read anyway. When Miss Mac left me for Brazil, she made me sad, sad, sad. When Clem the dog was mean to me, I felt really mad, mad, mad. Now Ox moved in and he got me feeling bad, bad, bad. In fact, this time he had to, in, in fact, this is the worst week I ever had, had, had. I wait to hear all the talk, or at least give me a, a grunting boing. I only heard only silence. When I glanced over at my neighbor, he, he was grinning from ear to ear, or he would have been if he had ears. Somehow, his, his mom didn't hear me up at all. Well, that's too bad. Isn't it? That's a little too bad. I felt better the following day, though, because it was Friday. That meant I would go 
take a little break from U26 and the green and grumpy lump. Every weekend, a different student took me home, and I had many wonderful and many wonderful adventures with my classmates and their families. <coughs> families. I I even got home with principal morals this week. I was going home with wait for the bell. God took well, and he'd want to make me home for a long time. Can you take off on home too? So Asked God. I think I can stay here. Mrs. Brisbane answered. Frogs don't need to eat every day, except when they're young. But I didn't feel quite so mad at it bad anymore. So mad, sad, mad, bad, bad anymore. Can't your mom pick us up? AJ asked Garth after school. I couldn't see him, but I could hear him as we waited outside for the bus. I had a blanket over my cage because it was cold outside. I didn't mind though, as long as far, far away from Aunt Cool I hadn't even tried to say goodbye to me. My dad said not to bother to bother her. She's been sick, said Garth. Can your mom pick us up? I wish, AJ sighed. She had to pick up my sister from kindergarten and put the baby down for a nap. Did you tell the folks about B? Asked Garth. At least I told them about B. Then he sounded a little muffled under a blanket. Nah, said AJ. Last time I said somebody was picking on me. My dad so- signed me up for boxing lessons. I hated people punching me. It was worse than being picked on. I tried to short, short on what AJ meant about getting picked on by a bean, by a boxing bean. I didn't have time to figure it out before the bus arrived. Here we go, said God, lifting my cage. Let's stick together no matter what. Okay, be sure to sing in front of by Miss Victoria. Whispered AJ, that's the safest. By the shuffling and scuffling sounds, I could tell, tell that we were on a bus. Luckily, a corner of the blanket slipped down, and I could see Miss, Miss Victoria, the bus driver, glancing over her shoulder. Keep moving, guys, she said in a firm voice. Whoa, ladies, one of you has to go. Can, can't I? Can't have three. Can't have three. And let's see. Three first graders. Three first grader girls huddled together in the seat right behind the bus driver. We're not moving until one of you guys go. Move, Beth. The girl on the end timidly got up and stared down the eyes, all nervously looking back at her friends. Keep going, folks, Miss Victoria snapped. Suddenly, boom. The girl named Beth fell down flat on the floor right in front of us. Her book slid around the floor on directions. The bus was quiet as back later until somebody said hey claws you dropped something that was followed by a nasty snicker you tricked her said aj in the not quite as uh, as usual says you aj what do those letters stand for anyway awful jerk I crawled over to the side of my cage to see who was speaking. He was a big, big, big for kid. He had spiky hair and a scowl on his face. As Garth and AJ bent over to help Beth pick up her books, Miss Victoria called out to the back of us, Garth and AJ, if you don't sit down so I can get moving, I'm going to report you too. Yeah, Garth, Garth, but the word sit down. The kid, the big kid sneered. I'm going to tell Beth said softly. Don't, AJ whispered back. Bean will only get worse. So this was the scary bean they were talking about. Beth slid into a seat with all her books. Here's an AJ step forward. Bean stuck his leg into this aisle. So that's how he can trip her. After AJ managed to step over, Garth and I in my cage were standing right next to Miss for Nasty. What's in the cage, bug face? Your lunch? Sorry a few times, but no one else on the bus laughed. Or is that your girlfriend? That did it. I was fighting mad. Somebody had to squeak up to this guy. For information, I am a male golden hamster. And are you one mean bean? 
Anyone got a mouse trap? Bean snored. Where are you guys in your seats, Miss Victoria? Yelled from the from the bus. I'm writing you up. Garth and AJ. Garth slid into a, a seat next to AJ. I was about to give Miss Victoria, Miss Victoria a piece of my mind when the bus lurched forward and I had to hold onto my cage for dear life. Sorry, I ain't eaten those neutral nibbles before we left. All week, I'd been looking forward to go home with Garth. Now, I wasn't sure I'd ever make it there. Friendship is one Friendship is one mind of two bodies. And that's the end of the chapter. I'll see you guys in the next